it's time we gave the Airbus some love. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, hello everyone and welcome back to yet another full flight video here on the channel. We are in the Phoenix A319 this time. Uh, we've been doing a lot of flying in the 737 MAX. That is very loud GSX, thank you. Um, yeah, we've been doing a lot of flying in the 737 MAX so I thought it was time to give uh, something else a bit of love. Um, so, over to Airbus today. Uh, we are in the Phoenix A319. Uh, just doing a little short hop from London Heathrow over to Jersey. Um, horrible weather today, as can be quite clearly seen. But nonetheless, we are going to get right into it. So let's jump into the flight deck. Uh, just double checking I've got all my wing views set up, which I do. So, uh, it's been a while since I've flown the Airbus, so forgive me if it's a little bit uh, all over the place. As I've again mentioned plenty of times on the channel, I am very much uh, not completely by the book because there is plenty of other channels out there that can do that for you. We're just here to have a good time, enjoy the sim for what it is, get some cool views and go from there really. So yeah, uh, right, first things first, right, so I've quickly done the overhead, really all that I've done is turn on the uh, fuel pumps. We'll go to the EFB, jeez oh, I cannot, cannot speak today. Uh, we'll go to Phoenix, We'll import the flight from Simbrief. We're going to ignore the fact that the time's wrong on it. It doesn't matter. Um, so we'll go to ground services. No, we won't. We'll go to mass and balance. Which... Uh, so we're going to load the aircraft. Uh, we'll just do it instantly. I can't be bothered waiting for GSX to decide what it's going to do. Just going to send that to MCDU. So plans 4.84, which is what I've got, is correct. Um, so 150 passengers again. That's what I've got is correct. So I think that is all good. I could get GSX to do the fueling, but to be honest, I can't really be bothered waiting for it to sort itself out. So we'll go to uh, FMGC. What the init page? So uh, we are. Echo Golf Lima Lima to Echo Golf Juliet Juliet uh, I thought maybe rather wrongly that it would import that itself I think I need to click I wonder if uh, if I put it in here if it will not in database. Okay, it's fine, we can just do it manually. Uh, I'll just put the cost index at 20. Uh, in terms of flight number, we're shuttle uh, 1 4 kilo today. Just stick that in. Uh, cruising at 180. Very short flight. Uh, in terms of fuel, we are sitting at 4.8, which is correct. 4.8. Just going to not bother filling anything else in there. Don't think I need to. Um, in terms of the flight plan, then it looks like I'm just going to have to do it manually, which is fine. It's only a short route, so we're departing from two seven right, I believe. Yeah, we are, um, and we are on uh, the Gogs two Foxtrot. Let's. Uh, insert that uh, from Gogsy. We are on the 
November uh, 621 to Sierra Sierra Alpha Mike um, then November 63 uh, to Lima Echo Lima November Alpha and that's us into the arrival from there so at uh, Jersey the arrival is into uh, ILS 26 I believe it's uh, not great conditions down in Jersey either. it's quite windy and rainy yeah, I think it's mostly a crosswind so we'll see how that is when we get down there uh, the Lilna 1 Juliet we'll insert that um, and don't have any well, we do. We have one discontinuity. I'll just clear that. Um, and, well, we just double check how that looks on the flight plan page, just in case there's anything that looks a bit stupid. Again, I'm probably pretty certain if I clear the jersey VOR that it will be better if we just go straight to the runway just for the sake of yeah for the sake of easiness we're not on VATSIM I will upload some VATSIM videos at some point um, but it's half past one in the morning as I uh, record this so there is probably very little on VATSIM just now anyway so um, in terms of performance, that's correct. Let's go back to the EFB. Um, we can go to uh, departure performance, so 27 right, it's wet, we can oh, wet, sync the load sheet, sync the live weather, and calculate. So we are 132, 145, 148. 132, 145 and 148. I've forgotten what it said we're flexing to. Uh, 78. And I'm assuming it's a flaps 1 departure, but I could be wrong because I didn't actually set it. Flaps 3? Do you know what? Let's go for it. Why not? Let's go for it. Uh, so it's flaps 3 and then it's what in the trim of up 0.4. Interesting that it's went in the flaps uh, 3 to departure, but we'll go with it. And I believe, if I haven't missed anything, which I might have because it's been so long since I've flown this, I know it's every aircraft is roughly the same. I think we are good to go. QNH 1010, I believe. Uh, well, as. Uh, just getting that to sky up a minute, just to double check that's correct. Yeah, 1010, 13 degrees, so that's fine. In terms of cruising, I'm just going to set this straight up to 180. Uh, we'll probably just open climb it once we're into the air. I'm going to get GSX just to prepare and push us back. As you can see, it's horrendous outside. So, probably should have started the APU, that would have been helpful as well. See, I knew there'd be something I forget. Uh, put the start switch on. GSX is probably going to start shouting at me in about two seconds because it wants everything removed and I'm not ready yet. Yeah, from one nice aircraft in the iFly 737 Max to the Phoenix. Uh, we're really starting to get spoiled for choice in the sim, which is great because it was only it feels like it was only a few months ago before that er, months, a few years cannot speak. Maybe only a year ago or so where we were really limited in terms of what we had. Um, so it's great to see because the sim is is good. We're using um, Parallel Forty Two Sim FX for like. Uh, the aircraft effects and the, and the general environment effects 
this is one of my favourite effects on it, is this, the rain dropping from the wings here. I don't know why, I just really like the effect. I think it works really well. It's great. So, that sounds like the APU is ready, which it is. We'll put the bleed on. Uh, Seatbelt signs on. Uh, beacon on. Uh, is the parking brake? The parking brake's on. Oh my goodness. What is going on here? Right, facing north. Because we're going to be going that way. I don't know what just happened with the... Was that GSX removing the ground power itself? Probably. Uh, I just want to double check the ground services. Because it chocks... Oh no, it has actually... It's done it itself. Oh. I'm not giving it enough credit. So, yeah, it's done it itself. As you can see, we're all tipped up, ready to go. Fair enough. Okay. I will release the parking brake then. Uh, where is it? There it's there. Here we go. Oh, no, you're not ready for the parking brake shit. What are you waiting for? I think it thinks there's still something. Let's just chalk some cones, remove them. GPU removed. I don't know what it's waiting for. Let's just... I just want to see if it's going to start pushing us back, but it looks like it's been... It's got upset with something, which is just about standard for GSX. And interesting, what is going on here? Continue pushback. Facing north. Release parking brakes. That was this time? Okay, GSX was having a wee hissy fit. Don't know if I'd done something there to upset it, but... Also, can I turn the cabin lights off on this? Uh, maintenance. Flight freeze, ground services. Index, doors. Is it something that's in here? Ground services. Mass and balance, panel states, sim settings. Uh, cabin. Ah, <laughs> now if I go, that's better. Knew it'd been there somewhere. Okay, uh, let's actually get the engine started. Uh, we'll flick engine two to start. Uh, no. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we will set the start selector to start, and then we will start engine two. Oh dear me. Not good. Let's just listen to the engine start. Is it just me or is that engine taking ages to start? Or is that us now? I felt like it took longer than the 737, like the max. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, that felt like it took some time. I, I was going to do a single engine uh, taxi, but let's not bother. Let's just get it started and 
get ready to go uh, go to the other wing view. What I've just realised, just as we sit in this wing view, is that as the rain's coming down, when the beacon flashes, the beacon is light, lighting up the, the rain red as it falls. That's such a, it's such a subtle effect, that, but it's... Uh, the fact that, like, this is where we are in Flight Sim is just amazing. Like, it just feels like only a couple of years ago we were dealing with FSX and uh, laterally P3D. Uh, why is the parking brake not on? Oh, whoa, very laggy there. Um, yeah, it feels like it was just yesterday that we were dealing with P3D and FSX, which... Yeah, I mean, yeah, let's not... <laughs> now's not the time for getting into that. So, uh, yeah, we've got two good engine starts. We can bring the APU off. We'll set flaps three, uh, which will be one, two, three. We can do a flight control check. Not really going to be able to see it from the wing because it's focusing on the rain, which I quite like the effect when it does that. Flaps 3 is set. Flight control check was fine. We can uh, arm the speed brake, bring the starter switch back to normal. I don't know why it's lagging like this, it's annoying, mate. We can do the auto brake to max. Uh, we can put taxi light on. And I think we can go. I'm just going to put the weather radar that obviously doesn't do anything on. Put the transponder on. Like so. It's going to say we've got a company message. Probably something about a delay, I'm going to guess. Uh, Uh, received messages. Eh, uh, ach, load sheets. Which, <laughs> you can use all of this stuff, like, if you want to do it, like, really, really properly. And sometimes, like, it is worth doing, but it's not something I'm really that bothered by uh, at the moment. So, with that, we will parking brake off. And we will get this show moving. So it's quite a long tax out to 27 right, so what I'll probably do uh, is wait for you folks. Uh, I'm so sorry I can't speak, I don't know if it's the time of day or what. Yeah, what I'll probably do is fast forward for you folks so that you don't have to sit through the entire taxi. And yeah, I will see you once we're a wee bit closer to the runway and ready for departure.
the runway now. So, nice long taxi. Um, we'll just get fired straight onto the runway then. So, landing lights can come on, turn off can come on, take off on the nose light. Uh, we can ding the cabin, uh, or we can try. There we go. Uh, take off config checks been done. The aircraft feels like really heavy, usually like with the IAE engines it's um, kind of just rolls with it, but seems to be struggling. I don't know, I don't actually know what our zero fuel weight is, that could be like a reason. The other thing that I need to do, which I forgot to do on my other screen, is... Start Sky Dolly, which I'm hoping is going to work. The with the Phoenix is the one that's the most um, with all the replay tools. The Phoenix is the most inconsistent with it, just because I think of the way its flight model is done. What a horrible, horrible day, though. Okay, with that, round on to the runway. Let's go for it. So we'll go roughly 50% and we'll hit the chrono because I've forgotten about that. There we go. Man, flex, SRS and runway. Here we go. There's 80 knots. B1. Rotate. Bring back the stick. We'll pause the brake. Here's coming up. Climb thrust. Find the nose down. Go we'll command A or autopilot one in the Airbus. Put the flaps to two. Laps one. That was meant to be flaps one. There we go. Put the flaps all the way up. We'll open climb it to 180. With that, we will set standard pressure. As we come out of the clouds here, just realised I didn't actually set the pressure on the uh, first officer's side. Look at that, burst out of the clouds. So I guess we can do it at some after takeoff checks. Uh, we can take the turn offs off. Taxi light can go off. We can disarm the speed brake. The flaps are up, and we look all good as we take off into the sunset.
And yeah, that was a nice little departure. It felt like it took a long, long time for the aircraft to get in the air. We were like flexing down to like 78% N1, so it's to be expected, I suppose. It just used to be in used to the 319 with the IAE engines being a bit of a pocket rocket. But yeah, lovely departure. Hopefully, Sky Dolly has done the business and recorded the departure okay. Um, that is the hope. But if not, I apologise. If it has, you already know what it has because you've probably seen some views from it. So yeah, it's a very short flight over to Jersey. Uh, just passing through 10,000 now, so we can turn the landing lights off. We'll just put the seatbelt signs off for now as well. Um, it's fairly smooth and it's a short flight, so uh, we want people to be able to get up and enjoy it. But anyway, with all of that being said, I will leave you folks as we do the cruise and I will see you on the arrival down into Jersey. See you then. Hello everyone, welcome back. I thought I'd bring you back a little bit earlier than I would usually do otherwise. Uh, it's a short descent into Jersey as you'd expect with a cruise in altitude of only 180. Uh, I just thought I'd bring you back to put the destination data into the FMS. Obviously that's what makes us a little bit different from the the Boeing aircraft that we've been doing a lot in. If I go over to the Metars, uh, and we just do a quick refresh of the Metar, the Metar just to make sure it's correct, you'll see uh, it's not the nicest down there. Um, so we've got uh, winds 180 at 12 knots, gusting to 22. There's a bit of a variable gusty wind as well, um, with broken clouds and overcast down to as low as 5 and 600 feet. So it's not very nice. QNH is 1010, so we'll just stick that in. 1010. The temperature is 15. And that wind again, it was 180 at 12. We'll put 180 at 12. I do not know what officially the minimums is because I don't have the charts because I haven't subscribed to Navigraph again yet. Um, so we're just going to guess and we'll just put a radio barrel in. Uh, radio? I do apologise, I cannot speak today. Uh, we'll put a radio um, minimums in of, say, Two, three, seven. Just making it up. Why not? Just so it says minimums to us when we're landing. Why not? So with that, that is all set. We're approximately two and a half minutes from top of descent. The weather is getting worse. So you can see we seem to have this kind of broken, scattered cloud layer here. And then it's just heavy, heavy IFR fog overcast below it. But it should make for an interesting land and why not?
it's been a long time since I've done a a flight in the um, any Airbus for that matter uh, so it's actually been quite enjoyable to do it, a bit different generally uh, my preference is to fly the Boeings there's no reason other than I've just always generally preferred them the, the, the experience in the sim but, but uh, the more I fly the Airbus the more I enjoy it, it's just because it, the, the the 737 is the first proper, you know, in-depth, study-level aircraft I ever flew in the sim back in the FSX days with the original PMDG 737, and to be fair, I'm sure the P- I'm pretty sure the PMDG 737 was also out in FS 2004, but yeah, I definitely started properly flying it in the FSX, so I think it's because it's the one I'm most used to. I didn't really get into the Airbuses until probably around the time when the, the Aerosoft versions came out, but now we've got Phoenix, which is arguably one of, if not the best, simulation of a, an airliner in the sim. I do think the iFly is does follow up very closely behind it. It's probably not quite on the level of the Phoenix, from my untrained eye. Um, there's a couple of wee bugs and things in the iFly. It's still technically pre-release, so they could potentially get sorted out anyway. So, but yeah, it's um, very, very close. We'll just start this descent. Uh, and we can go to the wing as we hit this turn. Lovely. See, it's just getting used to all of the kind of features because obviously in the 737 you can set the QNH and it will just show up here so that when you come out of standard it's already set to go into what whatever the QNH you've set is. It's just these slight differences about the aircraft that which is the reason why I'm never that bothered about being fully in depth and everything by the book and everything spot on because for me to be able to do that I would need to sit down and learn more of the, the systems and the things behind the aircraft which I don't want to do I enjoy the sim equally as much for the flying of the aircraft as I do just enjoying the, the views and what the sim offers especially now compared to as I say FSX P3D days if you're if you were flying yeah, in the sim around those kind of times you know we really are spoiled now compared to what we had for so long and we persevered with for so long <clears throat> but yeah if I was to if I was to do everything by the book I don't think I would ever be able to do everything by the book on every aircraft because it would require learning every aircraft and so much knowledge that the constant switching between them would be cause errors. I mean, it's the reason in real life why pilots are type rated and they fly that type. I know you can have multiple type ratings, but the more you do, the more, the more you know, the harder it's going to be to remember everything. And it's why generally the pilots in real life are flying one type most of the time. So for me, it's uh, not something that I would ever look to be doing seriously is being by the book because it's just, um, yeah, for the reasons I've just mentioned, not for me. I'll do enough that it's semi-realistic, I suppose, enough to get us to, from A to B while enjoying what the sim has to offer. That's me. Everybody's different. Um and that's the beauty of the sim you can do as little or as much as you want and that's what makes it the sim that it is the game I know some people don't like it when it's called a game but that's what makes it that's what makes it what it is <clears throat> anyway this is why I don't usually bring you back so early because I ramble and we're only at 130 so <clears throat> plenty of rambling still to come
I'm going to attempt to get Sky Dolly to record the landing again. I don't know if it will work. It's the Phoenix is temperamental with pretty much every um, every recording device for uh, FS. So we'll see how it gets on. I'll start it just after we come through 10,000 feet, if I remember. Just going to file the seatbelt signs on. Look at that sun. The other thing as well is the quality of the sim. You might notice it in my video titles, I'll sometimes say like 4K, 60fps, HDR. I do have HDR enabled on the sim. Um, due to like, due to circumstances I've ended up with a 55 inch OLED telly as my flight sim screen, which looks stunning. Um, basically, we just moved house and this was a screen that I had in my my parents' house, so um, when we moved house I got a, a new TV for the living room, so this one didn't have a home, so I've now used it for this. But that's why I record them in HDR, but the thing is, is YouTube's processing of HDR takes time, especially with the long videos. Generally when I've uploaded the full flight videos um, that are roughly an hour long, it takes YouTube two or three days before it's processed the HDR to be ready to be viewed, so it's, if you're wondering why it says HDR and the HDR is not working or doesn't appear to be working, that is why, because the HDR probably just isn't processed yet and it will also only let you watch it in HDR if you have a monitor or screen capable of receiving HDR. You'll know if it is an HDR because when you select the quality it will say, you know, 2160p60 HDR. But yeah, another side point, another ramble as we come through 10,000 and with that actually let's just set Sky Dolly up to record. Hopefully that does its best for us. Look at the effects on the clouds man, it just it looks so good get the impression it might be quite dark underneath all these clouds down in Jersey. Just going to put the landing system on here, just so I've got it. Um, it's wanting a bit of drag, so let's give it, whoa, let's not give it that much drag. Okay, so for landing we're going to walk auto brake medium, short runway at Jersey. Uh, the auto, the uh, seatbelt signs are on, smoking signs are on, everything looks all good up here. Uh, we're a little bit below the descent path but we're catching up now that the speed brakes uh, are deployed. Uh, pressure can be set now, 1010, which is still correct. 1010, uh, let's uh, make sure these are actually lined up this time. 1010. Now, I assume that was Active Sky being weird again, or what? I, I don't know. <laughs> but look at that. Wow. Just cannot get enough of the sim. Cannot get enough of it. Going to arm the localizer. Still way uh, below the, uh, above the glide. Sorry, but we'll catch up. 
Now, the thing that always gets me with the Airbus is the approach phase. Am I meant to let it do it itself? Because as you can see, as we went through that pink dot, we now are entering the approach phase. I generally just let it do it itself, unless I've made a royal arse of whatever I'm doing. Which, um, in a recent video that you have not seen, is exactly what happened. <laughs> um, you probably will never see it, because it was absolutely shocking. Uh, speed brakes I can bring in now. I'll actually just arm them. We'll go for flaps one, which will bring the slats out for us. As you can see, the glide is just still slightly below us. Should pretty much match up as we come round. That is the hope, anyway. Now, it says ignition. I don't know, am I meant to start these to ignition? I don't think so. Who knows? Now, it's captured the localizer. I'm going to try and see if it will grab the glide. Yeah, it's just managed to grab the glide, so we've just about managed that in the end there. As we come round then, we'll go flaps to it. Some FX coming in clutch with the uh, the effects, obviously. <laughs> so we'll arm the second autopilot. Take the taxi light on to take off. It's looking rather ominous as we come into the soup. Lovely job by the SimFX effects. Refresh that meta. Oh, I don't... Was that there before? I have no idea what that means, I'll be honest. No idea. So we're 6 DME. So with that, I'll go gear down in flaps 3. Just with the weather, we're just going to get configured nice and early. 3 greens, flaps 4. So you can see we've got that very blustery wind. It suddenly got very dark. No idea what the go around altitude is, so we'll just put it to 4000 for now. We might need it, judging by the weather. We'll leave the autopilot in for now, um, because I can't see anything out the window and I don't fancy just flying it down on the ILS because I'm a lazy pilot. I love these effects. What I could do is just change this to landing system just to see what we've got. Don't particularly like that, to be honest, so we'll just leave it as it is. This is some sketchy weather, though. 800 feet and I cannot see a thing. The wind's... The wind is holding fairly steady just now. A little bit blustery, but nothing too crazy, I wouldn't say. Down to 700 feet. Still can't see a thing. Oh. Just starting to see some of the ground there. You can see it on the, the left as well. Run my lights 
So with that, let's uh, take control of the aircraft. Interesting. The uh, the winds just completely caught us off by off guard there and nearly um, brought the aircraft into stall speed 100. there. Oh, oh, this is horrible. Oh, jeez. Uh, not too bad. Full reverse. Eighty, sixty, I idle the throttles, and welcome to Jersey, where that got a little bit sketchy for a second. I didn't actually see what the wind said on the um, ND, but when I did look at it, it went from <laughs> it went from being a kind of head-on crosswind to a bit of a tailwind, and the aircraft lost all of its speed all of a sudden. So that was uh, interesting to say the least. That was uh, yeah. Definitely very interesting. Welcome to Jersey. Yeah, we can take the strobe off. Just get the APU started up just now as well. And turn terrain off. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, interesting. Very, very interesting. <laughs> I don't know why the why the uh, a autopilot was being so awkward when we were landing there. It was uh, a bit weird. Let's see where will we park? I don't actually know generally where where the aircraft park at Jersey. Again, somewhere I've never been in real life, but we'll come round this side since it's closest to the runway. Why not? But yeah, that got a little bit sketchy on the, uh, the approach there. Now, let's see. if it's going to let us go to three here. It actually might work. Turn the aircraft around onto the stand. Just slow down a bit, plane, come on. There we go, we'll just let it roll. Gonna let it go a little bit more, come on. Let's try and be perfect. Oh, it's actually not gonna. I parked a skew, apparently. Parking brake on, uh, the APU bleed can come on and we can kill the engines. We can take the beacon light off, seatbelt signs can go off. 
We'll request deboarding. We'll take the fuel pumps off, why not? And welcome. Oh. Always something. There's always something. Blinding all the ground crew. There we go. And welcome to Jersey. What was a pretty horrendous uh, approach there. But we made it. We landed. And everybody can walk away, as they say. Yeah, it's the first flight I've done in the 1890 in a long time. Or the Airbus in general. So very different, but I enjoyed it, and I hope you did as well. But yeah, uh, thank you very much everybody for watching yet another full flight video. And yeah, if you've got any uh, requests for places you would like me to take, any aircraft really in the sim that you can think of, um, then just let me know. But yeah, in the meantime folks, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.